My name is Marco, and my job is writing tourist guides. It's a job that I like. I like discovering new places, getting to know their colors, their tastes, the people who live there. I like setting off. And today, I'm setting off to discover the tastes of the area between the Trino and Sinalo rivers in the province of Chieti. I'm setting off to discover the food, wine, and local produce of this part of the Abruzzi. I've never been, and I don't know what to expect, which is why I can't wait to get there. My journey starts from here, from the mountains that dominate this stretch of the Abruzzi, from the villages that make up the Alto Vastese, eight communes rich in history, traditions, and magnificent views, and magnificent cooks as well, such as Silvana, my first stop on my gourmet guide. She is going to introduce me to the cuisine of these places. She lets me watch as she prepares two typical local dishes, lamb done in charcoal and a sort of chopped up lasagna. First, she cuts up the potatoes and dresses them in salt, pepper, oil and parsley. Then, having mixed them together, she tips them into a roasting pan and adds the pieces of lamb. After she places the lid on, the copo of the dish's name, she covers it all with the charcoal and then lights the fire. As the meat cooks, Silvana prepares the pasta, firstly working it with her hands and then flattening it out with the rolling pin. In the end, she wraps it round the rolling pin and cuts it. And she tells me this sagna a pezzate, that is, chopped up lasagna. And this is what Silvana has prepared for my lunch. I think I will take things easy and enjoy these wonderful dishes. What's more, Silvana's agriturismo seems to me to be the perfect place to take a break from my wanderings. And after a lunch like that, the best thing to do is go for a walk in the green of the country. And here I am spoilt for choice. Monte Pizzuto facing Schiavi d'Abruzzo, from whose summit you can enjoy a wonderful view. The fir wood of Selva Grande at Castiglione Messer Marino to immerse yourself in dense woods of firs and beaches. Or the Cacavone Gorge, just outside Celenza Sultrino a spectacular canyon in which you can test yourself in a more demanding climb. I choose instead the woods that cover the hills between Torre Bruna and Carunchio, since they are rich in truffles, the black diamonds as they are known here for their high hedonistic and commercial value. And at dusk I have an appointment with Carmine and Luna in the hope of being able to find some and then enjoy them with them this evening. We were lucky. Tonight, Carmine will let me try some excellent tagliatelle with truffles. And although the credit is all hers, this evening Luna will have to settle for a simple bone. But in this part of the Abruzzi, apart from truffles, you can find another prestigious product, Ventricina. It is Luigi, a real expert on this salami that is very popular in all the villages of the Vastese, who lets me try it. The name Ventricina comes from the covering that is used to contain the meat that really was the ventre, the stomach of the pig. Then Luigi opens one with his hands to show me its consistency and explains to me why the salami is so noble. È nobile perché le parti nobili del maiale concorrono a costituirlo. Viene usato essenzialmente prosciutto, lombo e quindi carne magra pregiata nella misura del 75-80% e solo il 20% è parte grassa, ma anche questa parte grassa è effettivamente frutto di ricerca all'interno della mezzena del maiale, è solo il grasso più sodo e quella della parte dorsale che poi ne costituisce le fondamenta. And he also explains its red coloring. Per lo più è dovuto al peperone trito dolce. Quando si mangia la ventricina la fragranza è quella proprio del peperone dolce. 
Along with the pepper, you add fennel and then leave it to age for at least four months in an airy, cool place like this. Ventrashina is highly thought of that in the 40s during the war, it was used instead of currency. Non girava molto denaro e quindi i contadini e gli allevatori locali del Vastese erano uso di portare queste ventricine per ottenere favori. And tasting it, I can say that a ventricina was undoubtedly worth a big favor. Ventricina is a constant in these areas. There is no village in the Vastese where they did not offer me some. In particular here in the Medio Vastese, where the mountains give way to more gentle hills, working pork is not merely a tradition, but a real cult. In Carpinedo Sinello, there is even a pig museum, and in summer the streets of these medieval villages fill up with visitors for the many fates dedicated to Ventricina, whole roasted pig, and other local dishes. Dishes tied to a country tradition that has still not been erased by modern times. Dishes passed down from mother to child, as in the case of Antonio and his mother. Today I'm going to be a guest in their agriturismo, and they will give me a perfect example of this simple and richly flavored cuisine. For the first course, his mother prepares dorcioloni alla guitarra. This is a pasta made with one-third soft wheat flour and two-thirds hard wheat flour, both produced locally. You need a lot of strength to knead the mix. For this reason, Antonio explains to me, often this is something the men do as well. Then the pasta is flattened with the rolling pin. And finally, it is passed through the guitar. Ecco qui, quasi pronti nel dolce, anzi sono prontissimi. Abbiamo fatto questo sugo con castrato e papera muta. Diamo una bella spolveratina di formaggio. Ecco qui. Another traditional dish they will let me try are balls of cheese and eggs, made with a mixture of sheep and cow's milk cheese, breadcrumbs, egg and parsley. Questo piatto, la cosa bella è che veniva fatto anche da poi da queste signore alle 4 del mattino, quando si andava in campagna. Poi verso le 8 si faceva la prima colazione con queste belle polpette cacevo che dava molta energia per continuare a lavorare. Tra il cacevo che mandava questo profumo di formaggio insieme al prezzemolo e con un buon bicchiere di vino a suo tempo era il vino cotto, che si faceva sempre e si fa ancora qui sulla nostra zona, no, era veramente molto particolare. Antonio cooks them for five minutes in a sauce made of garlic, celery, tomato, green and red peppers, and the cheese and egg balls are ready. And since he is at the stove, he also makes me lesame, a soup that was made between April and May, when the food supply started to run out. It was made with lightly fried chili pepper, a sprinkling of sweet red pepper, freshly picked greens, spelt and boiled chickpeas. Questa ricetta si faceva in quel periodo lì perché si rastrellava tutto quello che rimaneva nelle credenze praticamente e quindi se c'erano un po' di fagioli, un po' di ceci, le lenticchie in questo caso e, e il grano che è il farro. Si raccoglievano un po' di verdure e si mettevano tutti insieme, era per fare l'abbondanza perché le famiglie di una volta erano molto numerose e, e quindi bisognava portare a tavola qualcosa da mettere nello stomaco. È una um, ricetta veramente povera, molto povera, che oggi viene molto apprezzato e degustato. E portiamo a tavola anche il farro con legume e verdure saltate in padella. Che bel profumino! Ecco qui, spero che mi è uscito come lo faceva la mamma e come me l'ha insegnato, così lo potrai degustare sperando che ti piaccia. Comunque penso che ti piaccia perché non hai mai provato quello che fa la mamma. His mom is a great cook but I can say that Antonio has learned to be just as good. I stay for a long while with him and his mother among the tables of their welcoming agriturismo. Continuing my journey towards the sea, I meet Sergio to speak with him about the excellent wine that is produced in this stretch of the Abruzzi, which is ideal for the cultivation of vines thanks to its being exposed to the sea breezes. 
and it is here on these hills that descend gradually and gently towards the coast that Sergio has his wine business. Noi produciamo vino bianco nelle tipologie Trebbiano, Pecorino, Cococciola e Moscato. Per quanto riguarda invece i rosati facciamo il rosato eh, IGT e il Cerasuolo d'Abruzzo d'Oc. Invece per i rossi facciamo un buon Montepulciano. He also explains that the Montepulciano d'Abruzzo d'Oc, if it is a reserve, has to be aged for at least two years, at least nine months of which in wooden casks. This is to heighten its characteristic hints of licorice, spices and red fruits. The secret of a good wine is selecting the best bunches of grapes in the vineyard and making them into wine not far from the harvest. Alla fine arriveremo a selezionare il miglior vino da mettere in bottiglia, sempre a livello artigianale. And when I taste them, I cannot but agree. But the hills of the Medio Vastese are also pasture land for sheep and cows, animals that are allowed to roam free, which is why their milk produces an excellent cacio cavallo with a creamy texture, yellow, and with a strong vegetable scent. These cheeses are aged for at least 100 days, like the one Alberto, a local producer, lets me taste. And these hills are also famous for their cultivation of artichokes, known as Morning Star from their characteristic shape that recalls the medieval weapon of the same name. It forms the basis for many dishes and delicious little conserved artichokes, since they are tender and free of thorns and nap. In the commune of Cupello, between the last week of April and the first week of May, they have the Carcio Festa, a gastronomic gala dedicated to this precious vegetable. At this point, having got my supply of artichokes, I'm getting near the sea, the last stage of my journey. And then finally, here is the sea. From Casal Bordino, where the Sinello has its mouth, to Vasto and San Salvo. From the beaches to the nature reserves, from the dunes to the trabocchi, strange fishing equipment that allows dry fishing by dropping and raising a large square net with ropes and pulleys. But here, there are still fishermen who go out in their small boats to lower their creels and nets and then come back for them the next day at the rising of the sun. And all this fish, naturally, ends up on the tables in the typical dishes of the cuisine of this stretch of coast. Dishes that Italo, cook for passion, at one time an equally passionate footballer, will cook for me. We start with the scapece, a simple and tasty dish. Then you boil some vinegar in which you melt the saffron and when the skate cools down, you stick it into this mix. This is a dish that is left for a long conservation, especially in the winter periods, where once again, for the cooking and the cooking that were in the past, the barques of that time could not be able to get out. For the first course, Italo decides on cavatelli alla pescatrice. Pescatrice is angular fish, the main ingredient of the sauce, along with garlic, parsley, tomato, and in this case, peppers. And to enrich his sauce, Italo also adds some squill. This sauce then is used with cavatelli, a pasta made with water and flour and scooped out by hand. And seeing it, it looks wonderful. <laughs> and finally, we get to the main course, the most sought after, the famous Vastese fish soup. It's made with at least six or seven different sorts of fish that vary depending on the season, along with shellfish. The fish most commonly used are grenard, weaver, rockfish, anglerfish, mullet and cod, cuttlefish and squid. First, the ones with the toughest meat are placed in the sauce until finally arriving, as the cooking continues, at the most tender fish like the mullet and cod. The basis of the dish, on the other hand, is composed of extra virgin olive oil, garlic, fresh cherry tomatoes, green pepper, and parsley. The fish soup is really delicious, and Italo's restaurant is really welcoming, great after a long day spent at the sea, perhaps.
And for his dishes, Italo uses only extra virgin olive oil that is produced locally. And on these hills, thanks to the vicinity of the sea and its breezes, grow magnificent olive trees that produce an oil that is delicate, green, and almondy, like the one Giovanni and his father offer me. They explained to me that this DOP oil known as Colina Teatina is obtained from different varieties of olive, including the native variety Nebbio or Fog, that gets its name from the pale green color of its foliage that seems to be permanently wrapped in fog. And these sunny lands are also ideal for fruit trees. San Salvo is famous for its peaches. I am in luck because it is harvest time now. And Nicole explains to me that, thanks to the work of the cooperative of which he is the president, they end up on the tables all over Europe. La cooperativa è formata da, da mille soci, tutti i produttori. Organizziamo il tutto, la lavorazione interna, poi eh, con l'aiuto dei de professionisti, quindi direttori commerciali, portiamo questa nostra produzione nei vari mercati europei. Il 50% del nostro prodotto viene consumato qui in Italia, l'altro 50% va in Europa. Eh, tutti i mercati d'elite perché abbiamo una produzione di alta gamma. Produciamo essenzialmente pesche precoce e nettarine precoce. La nostra produzione inizia nel mese di maggio e arriviamo al, a fine luglio. È un prodotto più difficile da coltivare, quindi anche questo ci contraddistingue perché poi la coltivazione del pesco è essenzialmente una coltivazione a livello manuale, dalla potatura al diradamento alla raccolta. These are gestures learned from fathers and grandfathers. It was they in the 50s who realized that this sandy terrain, so close to the river Trino, was perfect for the cultivation of peaches. This is a production that today has reached levels of supreme excellence. But coming here also means walking through the streets of historic centers, stopping in squares, in the middle of the archaeological park of Quadrilatero at San Salvo, in front of the sanctuary of Our Lady of the Miracles of Casal Bordino, but also in front of the Davalos Palace, Calderesco Castle, the Church of St. Mary Major in Vasto. And in these streets, led by the scent, I found Giuseppe's Dolciria Tipica, which, born a hundred years ago as a baker, today deals with the production of homemade sweets. Visto che sei dalle nostre parti, io non posso non consigliarti i dolci più tipici di questo territorio. Partirei dai bocconotti, passando per le catarrette, la cicerchiata, i celli pieni, i mostaccioli, i cagionetti con i ceci, le scrippelle, il fiadone di ricotta e per ultima la pizza dolce. Se ti piace il fondente, io ti consiglio i bocconotti perché parliamo di un morbido cuscinetto di pasta frolla che contiene un impasto molto liquido fatto di cioccolato fondente, mandorle tostate, cacao, zucchero, liquore e caffè. I really like dark chocolate and the bocconotti, but I am also curious about the celli ripieni. I celli pieni Eh, sono fatti con uh, l'impasto esterno, è un impasto molto tenero fatto con vino bianco e olio d'oliva e zucchero, chiaramente farina. Mentre invece il ripieno è fatto con una marmellata che si usa molto dalle nostre parti, cioè la marmellata d'uva, che mh, contiene ancora anche le bucce, quindi eh, ha un nome molto particolare, si chiama scrucuiata, proprio perché quando la mangi ha, lascia ancora quel, quel rumore del, della buccia dell'uva mischiata a del cacao, delle mandorle tritate e dei biscotti triturati. And here are the finished sweets. I don't need to say how delicious they are. You just have to look at them. I have reached the end of my journey, but I have decided to stay on for a few more days here. Because I tasted wonderful dishes here and saw beautiful sights, I met people who managed to keep alive recipes and traditions from another time, so as not to lose those simple and genuine dishes from back then, and that people too with their hospitality are simple and genuine. I will write all this in the guide, but above all, I will write that whoever comes to this part of the Abruzzi, between the rivers Trigno and Sinello, cannot but feel love at first visit.